So what does it mean to be an unscripted entrepreneur? Let's go over MJ DeMarco's new book, Unscripted. These are my top five takeaways. So let's get fucking into it. Number five, the script. It is a system that has been formed to keep you in the position that you are in. It's modern day slavery. In the 1999 movie, The Matrix, the protagonist Neo realizes that many of the inhabitants of Earth have been living in a dream world, a virtual reality that's been fed to humans by a parasitic machine race, the virtual reality distracting them from the discomforting truth. Our script is the socially conditioned narrative that we have been indoctrinated into since childhood. It consists of many fallacies, fallacies such as to succeed in life, you need to go to school, you need to get good grades, you need to receive a college degree. The people that create wealth for themselves are in the position that they're in because of luck. Rich people are usually shady. Retirement happens at age 65 after you've worked for many years for a good company that will take care of you. Compound interest is the key to riches. You should do what you love so that you don't have to work a day in your life. Starting a business is risky and you should put your money in a 401k or other safe investment vehicle such as mutual funds. These fallacies are preached by seeders, all in the effort to create you into a model citizen, which is abbreviation for mediocre, obedient, dependent, entertained, and of course, lifeless. Takeaway number four. The do what you love myth. In the pursuit of financial independence, we're often bombarded with the same old tired advice of do what you love. The basic premise being that if you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. It sounds so lovely, doesn't it? The problem with this notion is that doing what you love pays no fucking attention to what the market needs. It instead focuses on your own selfish desires. Just because you love going to the gym doesn't mean that you should be a personal trainer. It doesn't mean that you should start the thousandth YouTube fitness channel and attempt to get rich. Just because you like playing Call of Duty doesn't mean you should start a fucking YouTube vlog gamer channel. There's already too many of those. Just because you like Hello Kittens doesn't mean you should make another blog that's saturating the internet. The market does not revolve around what you love or what you want. The market is selfish. It's a selfish beast. It only cares about one thing and that is what it needs. Similar concept was talked about in the E-Myth who visited. Just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you should revolve your business around that thing. The skills needed to make your famous apple pie recipe are not the skills needed to run an apple pie business. They're two completely different things. Running a business, being an entrepreneur is a different skill set to doing the activity that you like to do. And there's also another side to this coin. If you start doing what you love as a business venture, you might end up hating what you initially loved. This happens in many cases. Do what you love is a myth that is propagated by many of the gurus. Understand that there is a difference between do what you love and putting in love into your work. You don't have to enjoy cleaning your backyard, but you can put love into the work and do a good job. So don't fall for the do what you love myth. Takeaway number three. The gurus and the compound interest myth. How many gurus have you heard giving the same old advice about the power of compound interest? The power of the stock market? How you should cut coupons and not have a coffee in the morning? The advice is repeated over and over ad nauseum in just about every finance book. These gurus offer you advice about investing in mutual funds and other investments as a way to get rich fast, promising incredible returns. One problem though, these gurus do not follow their own advice. They don't practice what they preach. The truth of the matter is that the investment vehicles do not usually create explosive growth unless you're dealing with large volumes. Compound interest works well when you already have a large principal to work with, not your pennies. These gurus make their money from their books that they sell, their expensive cinemas and their retreats they run. They're not making their fortune from stock market. They're making their fortune from charging clients thousands of dollars to learn about the stock market. The market can't be predicted, but these gurus would have you believe that you can't beat it. 
The secret can be yours once you sign up to their email list and buy their new DVD course. They won't tell you about the inflation race or the threat of financial recessions. No way, no fucking way. That shit will scare you away. Instead, they will tell you the same story about how if you bought stocks in Coca-Cola back in the early 1900s, you will be able to enjoy millions of dollars right now. Yes, at the age of 100 and something, you can finally bowl like Dan Bilzerian. Does that sound great? Let's put our faith in these gurus. Or not. Takeaway 2. Value cheats. There is a new breed of entrepreneurs that has played the market. The new breed is in it to make a quick buck by any means necessary. These fakerpreneurs are the ones that try and cheat value. Entrepreneurship is fundamentally based on providing value and solving problems. These guys will try to provide the least amount of value possible, all while trying to receive the most amount of money possible. These are the guys that run affiliate links to dodgy products all through their pages. These are the guys that try to use dodgy black hat SEO tactics to get traffic to their pages. These are the guys that spam Kindle with crappy copy pasta ebooks and try upsell you on their VIP courses. As soon as the trend dies, they die. They hop from blogging to Kindle ebooks to Shopify to drop shipping to whatever's popping at the moment. It's all about trends. Ultimately, value cheats don't stay long in business. You can only cheat value for too long before you have to face the consequences. Ask Peter Sage. Entrepreneurs offer real value in exchange for monetary gains. They offer value by solving problems. Problems are often solved in one or two ways. One, innovation of a new product or a system. Or two, making improvements on an existing product or system. Think about Uber. Uber was incredibly successful because it made improvements on a problem that existed, the taxi industry. For years, people complained about how cabs were often too unreliable and too expensive, but no one did anything about it until Uber jumped into the picture. Uber is disrupting the industry because of the improvements it made on the customer experience. They are a typical example of a successful entrepreneurship venture. Just making improvements when people ask for them. Innovation is creating something entirely new, something new to the market, entering a blue ocean in which you can create a monopoly. You can check out the Blue Ocean Strategy book about this. It goes into more detail. A good example of entrepreneurship innovation is streaming services such as Spotify and Apple Music that are now gaining immense popularity. It's far easier to improve an existing problem over creating something entirely new. So if you want to make a product and be an entrepreneur, look for existing problems that are there and what improvements you can make on the products or the systems that are currently in use. Takeaway number one and perhaps the most important takeaway from the book is the process versus the event. Entrepreneurship, not just entrepreneurship, many successful ventures consist of many processes that go unheard by the masses. The script would have you believe that things happen due to sudden events. For example, the script would have you believe that the actor gets the blockbuster role from an event. Some college kid invents the biggest social media site on planet Earth from an event. The YouTuber becomes a millionaire from an event. What the script does not highlight is the process that underlies these events. The actor's hundreds of auditions and embarrassing rejections. The college kid's 10,000 hours of programming that led to his mastery and many failed attempts. The YouTuber's hundreds of failed videos and sleepless nights and editing problems and all that bullshit. Entrepreneurship is a game of process. It's not a glamorous event. A glamorous event does happen, but that's after process. Instead, it's a life in the trenches. Entrepreneurship is not easy. You must be willing to constantly work on your vision, all while embracing the fact that you might not get rewarded instantly. MJ talks about the desert of desertion, which is the period when you're implementing something new and you don't get feedback for a while. And this is where many people give up, but not you if you're an entrepreneur. You have to push through that shit. There is no instant gratification. This is a long-term 
game. Most people won't be successful entrepreneurs because it requires you to go against your fundamental human nature. It requires you to be formless like water, as Bruce Lee said. There are no clear-cut blueprints. There are no simple step-by-step guides to follow. It's only actions and feedback. Human nature is lazy, which is a quality that entrepreneurs can't embrace. This shit ain't for everybody. Those are my top five takeaways. I highly, highly suggest you guys check out MJ DeMarco's new book. It's one of my favorites. And if you haven't read The Millionaire Fast Lane, go check that out. Um, I've only scratched the surface here in terms of the content in the book. You're going to have to read the book to really understand what the fuck is going on. And I've got a link in the description. It's going to be an affiliate link because I'm one of those value cheats and whatnot. But anyway, I hope you guys like it. Peace. Until next time.